Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called Monochromatic Field and Stream. It's a 5x10, and I painted this way back in September. So uh, you can always tell when I'm uh, busy with other things other than painting when I'm, I'm pulling old chestnuts out of the uh, cupboard. But I have to say, I really, really like this uh, painting. Um, I, I love, I, I don't just love it because it's monochromatic, I just uh, I think it's got really good composition and I happen to know like the things that were odd in the, um, the reference photo that I avoided so I have a sense of pride about that and uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy to present it to you, hopefully uh, you dig the uh, monochromatics, I know some of you do. Um, you know, and if, you, if you're one of the people that doesn't, you think, oh, no, I want color, man. I think color is more interesting. Yeah, color is interesting. But, uh, you know, if you're here to, uh, to learn about painting, um, don't disregard monochromatics. I wish I'd, I'd started doing them ages ago. First of all, you only need two colors. So if uh, materials is a problem, affording materials is a problem, you can afford a tube of uh, good quality titanium white and a tube of ivory black. I know you can. Everyone can. Um, you know, I won't get into all the other economies, but I'm painting on hardboard. That's not expensive. You can even paint on MDF, which is just a little bit cheaper. Um, a little more prone to um, issues with, with water, but uh, yeah, then again, so is a watercolor painting. So just pretend you're doing watercolor paintings and paint on India. Um, when I am uh, doing a monochromatic, generally what I'll do, the first thing I'll do is, uh, of course, I have my reference prepped. And a lot of times it's color reference and I'll just do a quick conversion to black and white. Now, there's a lot of variables when you convert to black and white. Um, and Photoshop has a very excellent um, adjustment layer called black and white. Um, and you'll notice that as you uh, force the uh, the various different colors in the spectrum to go chromatic you can uh, you can drag the slider to the left or the right and it's a very significant difference so of course with landscapes almost all of the color all the color in the land is in the red and the green um, the sky of course most of it would be in the blue you know uh, so but you can get some good uh, a, a real good start and you can really make things look a little bit more appealing it's just a standard uh you know turn turn it into a grayscale which is not so bad in itself if you if you do that with a grayscale image i have a little different microphone today so hopefully this sounds okay i'm, I'm actually holding it here because my other one's in my my home studio yeah my little headset hopefully this sounds all right i, I have a quieter computer now so i'm thinking this might be okay um so yeah first thing i do is i'll make say gray as close to 50 percent as i can it's okay if it goes a little darker like 60 percent gray <clears throat> but you don't want it lighter you don't really want a 40 percent gray and definitely not anything like a 30 percent gray that'll be too light um, and you'll find that 90 percent of your painting you're going to just go reaching for that gray and either making it a little darker or making it a little lighter you know uh, that's so it's really I tend to think of it as three colors I think of black white and gray yeah and um, now I absolutely love uh, trying to get tonal effects with no color because I think that uh, people always associate tonalism with uh, with color automatically usually muted color or deep you know rustic colors you know like your deep uh, mahoganies and maroon tones and golds and oranges and things like that you know ochres um, but you know the fact of the matter is is that tonalism is really more of a oh by the way check out how I made a little change in my uh, uh, my composition there you notice I had that tree in the middle much bigger and that was fighting things so I want people's eyes to be able to go into the distance and having that too large there uh, really was not working for that so I think that was a good call I made of course in the reference it's big you know 
So you got to be changing that reference up. You got to be deviating from that reference. Uh, and how do you know when? You know, um, well, you first of all, you have intuition. But intuition is not a magical, um, well, it is magical. I won't lie. But it, it is something that can be trained. And uh, intuition becomes uh, stronger and stronger the more you use it, the more you rely on it. And what uh, builds into the other thing that builds intuition is experience. You know, after having done a lot of things, um, you'll get promptings, you know, like, hey, remember last time you put something big in the middle like that, you know, really mess with the recession into the uh, distance. You know, I remember that. So, um, but it was intuition that kind of brought it in and backed it up. Yeah. Um, you know, I have, I've sold a few of these monochromatics. Uh, I, and it's hard for me to gauge things out here in, um, in Northland. I do have like a show running currently and I've had some pretty good sales in it, but I have to say, I think most of the things that sold tend to look like New Zealand. It's just the way, um, the, the New Zealanders are, they just like to buy things that look like their country and that's uh, I guess it's understandable I don't know I don't understand it <laughs> I say it's understandable but I don't understand it uh, but I, I know it's a reality that's for sure um, but you know ultimately um, when you uh, made a decision to do fine art I mean it's not like you're completely divorced from any any commercial concerns at all um, but really what it means to me is that um, you have to weigh things. It's like, well, this is what I really feel like doing, and this is what I, I think will be, you know, the most expressive and emotional statement I can make right now. And uh, it's if it's not a scene of the place that I'm living in, then then I'm going to be painting a scene that's not the place I'm living in, and that's just how it goes, you know. Uh, on the other hand, it's uh, there's a balance needs to be struck. Um, one of the reasons I set up the uh, the home studio in the back is so I could start focusing on doing much larger paintings. In fact, I don't think I'm going to allow myself to do anything smaller than, say, 16 by 20 in there. 16 inches on the short side, which, you know, might... Funny enough, when I was back in the 80s, when I was a picture framer, you know, 16 20 didn't even seem like that large a size. But uh, when you're a painter, you know, it's definitely a step up from an 11 by 14, I'll tell you that. Or from an 8 by 10, there's four 8 by 10s in a 16 by 20. It's the same proportion, too. I've got a nice little vertical lined up. It's going to be pretty cool. Anyway, let's talk some more about uh, the monochromatic. So you get the tonalist effect by the way the values are handled. Okay, and the other thing is it's sort of a mental attitude. Um, which is really key, I think. If you are working with black and white and gray and you have this attitude like, oh, this really sucks, so I wish I had some color, you know, that's, that's going to create a painting that's not going to be that uh, stimulating. If you have an attitude instead like, <clears throat> wow, look at everything I can do with these two colors. It's amazing. You look at all the different variances, and it is a color. It's not a non-color, you know. It's, it's, it's actually sort of in the blue range, right? Every now and again, too, on the monochromatics, I might, um, if I want to change things up but still have it basically gray, uh, I might break out a little bit of um, raw umber and throw that in, into the gray. So it's like a warm gray instead of the built-in uh, default cool gray, you know, because uh, the gray you get with ivory black and titanium white is definitely on the cool side. It's not completely neutral, um, which, you know, you can totally tell if you take a photo and you bring it into Photoshop, force it, uh, you know, um, desaturate it, you'll see there's a change, a difference. So it really is a color. And... Um, the other thing is, uh, and I have, uh, you can go d digging in the channel about mm, five months ago. I did a, um, a neat little video uh, with some power glazing uh, where I showed how you can take uh, a grayscale painting and make it blue. So blue that you'll never ever know that it was at one point just a grayscale. 
Um, I have tried to do this um, on the yellow slash orange side of the spectrum. Technically, you'd think you could pull it off, but I think maybe if I was going to do that, I would probably do the monochromatic with a bit of um, raw umber in the mix um, just to warm it up. Um, because what happened when I did it was that I was fighting the coolness in the gray um, as I was trying to get warm colors. I was able to pull it off. It actually took two sessions. That's up on the channel too. I think it's in the uh, members area now. Um, and speaking of, this video is going to be in the members area. It's about two hours long and I'm really proud of this painting. I think it's beautiful and uh, hopefully, um, you know, you, you do too. And uh, by the way, you know, when you uh, you can join the members area, you're, you're really helping support the channel. You know, I mean, I have people send me donations, which I really appreciate, but in fact, keep them, keep them coming, folks. I, I really do appreciate it. Uh, it's helped me pay for quite a few things in my uh, my new home studio. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, that's just another way of supporting me. If you're getting some value from what I do, you know, pay it forward and uh, support this artist by becoming a member. And um, what you have access to is basically fly on the wall, you know. I'm talking, and I'm not talking every second uh, that I'm painting, but I am definitely um, imparting um, insights and um, really insights into my struggle, you know, and there's always going to be a struggle. There's, there's some things that uh, get set up, um, and they're, they're awesome all the way down the line, um, and other things, uh, a bit more of a struggle, and, uh, you know, the, the, the fight is real, the struggle is real. And um, yeah, check out check out those videos there. Now we got just a minute left here, and I wanted to uh, I was uh, you know doing some work in the um, my studio in the back, and uh, I found an old video from the Draw Mix Paint guy. Sorry, I don't remember his name. He's awesome though. He's so awesome. I love him. Um, Draw Mix Paints a channel on YouTube. You know, way more popular than this channel, but you know, with with good reason. He's imparting a lot of great information and really. Um, you know, breaking things down for people that want to uh, start out with painting. And, and my channel's a little more, I guess, intermediate, you know, but it's all good. There's lots of different approaches. But one thing uh, that that fellow over at Draw Mix Paint talks about, and I'm inclined to agree with him, he's talking about how you don't need to have talent to draw and paint. And th th that's a fact. In fact, I had someone in the studio the other day, he's like, Oh, I've always wanted to. I just don't have the talent. And I'm, I always will disagree with those people. I will say, well, it, really, talent's not much of a factor. I says it's a time thing. He's like, oh, you is it? I'm like, yeah, it really is. You know, if you uh, you decided that you're going to draw an hour every night starting tonight, um, in 30 days after 30 hours of drawing, you would see a vast improvement. Um, if you kept it up for a year, you would see. Uh, an, an incredible amount of uh, uh, improvement and probably you'd be there you'd be you know a drawer you know and the same thing goes for painting now painting is difficult to do well um, there but once you you know what to do and you do it you can do it it's I've seen people with a lot of talent and ability do horrible paintings um, mostly because they were, were relying on, they thought their talent and ability would carry them through. Um, but what really carries you through to doing good work is hard work and applying yourself uh, di diligently um, and consistently. That's the difference. So, you know, if you're one of these people that uh, believes in talent, you know, maybe you've got some talent. Uh, in my view, it's, it's more that some people are a bit more sensitive to aesthetics than others which does give you an advantage as an artist, uh, no question about that. But if you wanted to uh, express yourself with drawing or painting, you can do it just by applying yourself. Just believe that, that's the truth. Uh, believing that uh, you need to have some magical ability that comes from God or the universe or whatever. Mm, you don't need it, you can just get there on your own. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for joining me today. I'll be back real soon with another video. 
I really appreciate you watching this one. And until I do see you again, please do me a favor, do me a solid. Take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones, and stay out of trouble.